So this past Sunday, which was May 15, 2022, we had a lunar eclipse. And I actually photographed one of the coolest time lapses that I've ever done. And I wanted to share it with you guys because it was actually really, really cool. Um, this eclipse was a complete total lunar eclipse, which means the Earth's shadow was completely blanketing the surface of the moon. And the cool thing about it was, is it actually started early in the evening. So as soon as the moon came up over the horizon, it started to eclipse. Then we got to totality, which is the point in which the moon is at its darkest. And at this point, the moon is so dark, you can still see it in the sky with the naked eye, but it's, it appears red, which is why we call it the blood moon. But during this period, um, if you have a camera and you increase the exposure time to where you don't oversaturate the moon, you can start to see stars. And because totality lasted an hour and a half, I decided to do a time lapse during totality. So my intent of photographing the moon was actually more trial and error. I was just experimenting. I had no intent on posting anything on YouTube or, or whatever on social media about the eclipse. Um, I was just trying to dial in what settings to use in future so that I could do a start to finish time lapse. And this technique is going to be something I'm going to use for um, solar eclipses as well and next, in the next two years we've got two big solar eclipses we're gonna have a, a, a total solar eclipse and I'm really excited to see that because I've never seen that in my whole life and uh, this is actually a perfect time for me to dial in my technique so that when it does come time for the eclipse I'm perfect so the equipment that I use to photograph the moon was a telescope. So this is a Celestron Raza, which is an F2 telescope. So very, very fast optics. Has a focal length of 400 millimeters. So with that, using it with my dedicated Astro camera, which is a one-shot color camera, the ZWO 2600MC Pro. The field of view actually worked out really, really good for doing a time lapse. And on top of that, again, with the optics being so fast, I was able to get some good, clear detail, even though I was increasing the exposure to bring out the detail on the moon and, uh, and able to bring out what I think is more stars than if I was using a slower telescope. So when the eclipse started, which the moon was full at this point, I set my exposure time to not saturate the moon. And I kept it at the same exposure setting all the way to totality which is what you don't want to do. Um, and the reason why is if you're wanting to see any type of detail of the blood moon, um, you're going to have to do this in post by stretching your exposures. And by doing that, you're also going to stretch noise. Um, the end result is, is not good. So the best way that you want to do it is the way I ended my time lapse was adjusting the exposure from totality all the way back to when the moon is full. So that way the brightness is always, uh, you can see the full detail of the moon um, when it's uh, in totality. And then as the moon gets brighter, you keep adjusting your exposures back down to where the brightness on your screen stays the same and the transition in the time lapse looks really, really good. So the coolest part about the totality period is when you're using a camera and you can adjust the exposure time, you can actually uh, bring out the detail of the moon, which is very dark, but you can bring it out so it, it, look, it looks like it's glowing red, but then you can see the stars behind it. That's the coolest part because typically, well, you actually can't see stars behind the moon. It's like impossible because the moon is so bright under a normal moonlit sky. Um, if you've seen images of the moon that uh, with stars in the background, that's, that's Photoshop. So people will take a picture of a different part of the sky and then superimpose that in Photoshop and that's how you get a moon. It's called an HDR technique, um, but it, it's actually a, a false image, but it looks really, really cool. But you can achieve uh, a true image of the moon with stars in the background during totality because the moon is so dark and you can bring out that light. And totality for this eclipse actually lasted an hour and a half. So I started thinking, well, so I've never seen a totality time lapse, so I'm gonna put one together. And the cool thing about this is, is that the Earth, you know, as we know, rotates every 24 hours approximately, and the moon 
will orbit the Earth at nearly the same speed of it, but it's slightly at a different speed. So when you're shooting a time lapse, you can actually see the moon moving through the sky, and that's what I got, and that's what I want to show you.
shooting this lunar eclipse was also kind of a, a sad moment for me because the telescope that I use, which is one of my favorite telescopes, uh, I've actually just sold. And I, I sold it to a buddy of mine, and he's a YouTuber that does nothing but astrophotography, and I can't wait to see what he does with this telescope. Um, I'm not getting out of astrophotography, but I am going a different route in terms of um, imaging. And uh, yeah, this has been a great scope. I've taken a lot of good images with it. But, uh, but yeah, I'm gonna try something different. Whether or not I share videos on that, I'm not sure, because I don't know if I wanna do YouTube type stuff. But uh, I got friends and family out there who like to see some of the stuff I'm doing, so that's kind of the point of this video. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I'm selling it, so um, I'll let you know who buys it. And if you don't already know, uh, you, then you will, because <laughs> uh, this this guy's awesome. So, uh, anyways, um, but that's all I have. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, um, and uh, yeah, thanks.